Hi brothers and sisters. Okay, so now in this video, I'm going to talk about what faith does. And so I'm going to try to be as thorough as possible. Whatever I say from here forth might actually be just additional visitations to this point right here of what faith does. Faith is that key ingredient that enables us to go deeper with the Father. It enables us to go deeper. And so what it is, is the key ingredient for this walk with God. And what it does is it enables us to go deeper. All right, so what do I mean? I mean that faith without deeds is dead. Faith without deeds is dead. And so your deeds are evident of, sorry, are evidence of your faith. And what that looks like is this, is that faith leads to surrender. And surrender leads into obedience. And so the greater your faith, the greater your surrender, the greater your obedience. And the reason why I stress faith so much is because how can there be obedience or surrender without faith? I'll just try to break it down like this. Do we believe that Father has in mind for us the very best? And that he alone can bring us into that point where we are experiencing him and experiencing um, the joy of his kingdom in its fullness. Like, do, do we believe, sorry, I'll say that again. Do we believe that His word is good. Do we believe that if he says it, then that's how it is? Because depending on how much you believe, that determines how much you will surrender and how much you will lay down at the cost of believing, of having faith. So that's what I mean. How can we surrender if we don't have faith? You see what I'm saying? And so, in other words, a lack of surrender is a result of a lack of faith. See what I mean? Because faith is the first, it's the starting point. Faith is the starting point. And then by faith we surrender, and through surrender we obey. And when we obey, we are brought into that fullness of what God wants us to be. Because down here, earth is a testing ground. It's a testing ground where it is, obviously it's good versus evil, so we're given the command to turn our hearts to him, to be purified, to hate what is evil, to cling to what is good, and to obey, and you know, we know like what the typical command is, don't steal, don't kill, don't lie, don't worship idols, all that stuff. We know these things. But then there are things for the bride of Christ, and this is why I'm making this channel, it's because I want to bring it to you guys' attention. Even though you already know, I'm just bringing it to you to remind you that the Bride of Christ. Sorry about that sound. I don't know what that is. Anyway, that the Bride of Christ is going to be responsible, eternally responsible for more. Because Christ is the King of Kings. So his bride, his wife, you know, symbolically. How much do you think that we're going to be doing? If he's the king of kings, and then the bride of Christ is like the wife of the Lord, pretty much. Like, how can you even fathom that? You see what I'm saying? 
And if a an earthly man, just a human being, has a standard for a wife and how he thinks his wife should be. Like, for example, maybe he wants her to be beautiful. Maybe he wants her to be able to cook. Maybe he wants her to be good at sports. Like, those are just the typical things. And then you got the greater things, like he wants her to be a companion to him, a friend to him, a person who will listen, a person who can build him up, all that stuff. Okay, we got that. That's just an earthly man. So a wife has to meet some kind of standard just on earth. How much greater do you think that standard is for the Lord God, creator of all things? What would he look for in a wife? You know, the scripture says about wives um, submitting to their husbands, pretty much being of a of a quiet spirit, pretty much being loving, um, being gentle, being respectful, and, um, you know, because it's fitting in the Lord. That's what the scriptures say. I'm sorry, I forgot where that is. I'm more than glad to drop the verses down in the description boxes because I want you guys to be able to look at these verses and meditate on these verses after the video is over with. But anyway, that's what it's talking about, how wives are supposed to submit to their husbands because it's fitting the Lord. That is based on, like, the like the master marriage. What do I mean the master marriage? God and his bride. It's, it's like a minimized version, man and wife, like human being man and wife, you know what I mean? But anyway, how much greater do you think the standard is for God and his wife? You can pretty much apply every single every single command that God gives us in the Bible. Um, love your neighbor. Build up your brothers. Have no God before him. All that stuff, but except following it to pretty much um, the perfection that God's Holy Spirit will bring you into. You know, because righteousness comes through Christ. Not by us, but through Christ. How is that? Because by faith, we surrender and we obey according to our surrender, which is brought about by faith. You see what I'm saying? So, whew, this is deep, guys. This is deep. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I want to break it down and talk about how we are kingdom builders. We are kingdom builders. What do I mean? I mean that what we do down here determines what we do up there. What we do down here and what pretty much our obedience translates into rewards up there. And those rewards will be used to, will be pretty much given not only positions in the kingdom, but just different. It's a little hard to explain. It's like we'll be given ways, bigger ways to serve him while we're in those positions. And, you know, I wanted to read to you guys in this next video where I talk about how we're kingdom builders because point of this channel is so that you guys will take hold of the treasures that are yours in Christ if you so desire and I say that because free will um, but I want to share with you the parables of Jesus and how that relates to us being kingdom builders and how the greater your faith the greater your surrender the greater your reward. That's how. By faith, by having great faith and great surrender and great obedience, that's how you make sure that you don't forfeit your rewards. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to say. There's actually a lot to say about this. I'll just probably be breaking it down into a whole lot of videos, but I'm excited because in the next video, I want to talk about being a kingdom builder and sending up your rewards now.
while we're being tested down here in the flesh. Because the test isn't just of, um, well, overall it's good versus evil, but I guess what I'm saying is that demons aren't the only ones that we're fighting down here. Demons aren't the only ones that can hold us back from receiving what God wants us to receive, but that we can only receive if by faith we surrender and obey. They are not our only enemy. If we allow our desires to come before his desires for us, we can become our own enemies by using our free will against ourselves, pretty much. And so I want to talk about kingdom building. And now we know what faith does. Faith is that vehicle that drives us deeper and deeper and deeper into Abba's heart. And so, God bless you guys. And I can't wait to share with you some stories in the next video. Bye-bye.